how SpaceX and NASA will colonize the moon. The moon has always been a source of fascination to humans since time immemorial, and humanity has since longed to reach the moon. The first successful attempt to get to the moon was made by Luna 2 of the Soviet Union on September 13, 1959, after which there were other attempted moon landings by Luna 9 and 10. In the 1960s, the U.S. conducted crewed missions to the moon as part of the Apollo program. Six missions landed humans on the moon, beginning with Apollo 11 in July 1969, during which Neil Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon. That's one small step for man, one these missions, however, pushed NASA to its absolute limit as people died and there were no other missions as a result of that until recently. For the first time in about five decades, humans are setting their sights again on the moon as a destination. It is the stated policy of this administration and the United States of America to return American astronauts to the moon within the next five years. While going to the moon today is still not easy, the good news is that it will not be as difficult as it was in the 1960s. This is because, apart from the sheer force of will and desire to get to the moon, we now have really advanced technology that can help in not only reaching the moon, but also conquering the moon. The ambition of humans has changed since the last attempt to reach the moon, from wanting to just reach the moon to wanting to reside there. Let's see how close to the goal we really are. The Artemis program is the new NASA mission to the moon and is scheduled to deliver the first astronaut to the moon in the year 2024. Its name is a recognition of Artemis, the Greek goddess of the moon. It is the United States-led International Human Spaceflight Program with the basic goal of returning humans to the moon. The Artemis program is the most ambitious project NASA has undertaken since Apollo 11. The project was born during the Trump administration and is being funded by the United States government. Apart from landing people on the moon, the Artemis program is also expected to establish an Artemis base camp on the moon by 2028. The implication of this is that by 2028, people will be living and working on the moon. Imagine you have a sibling living on the moon. Cool, right? The launch vehicle to be used in this program is the Space Launch System, an American super heavy lift expendable launch vehicle that will replace the Area 1 and Area 5 launch vehicles of the canceled Constellation program of 2005. The spacecraft to be used in this program is the Orion, which consists of a crew module space capsule designed by Lockheed Martin and the European service module manufactured by Airbus Defense and Space. The SLS is preferred over the SpaceX Falcon Heavy, which is considered not strong enough for the job of launching the Orion into orbit so that it can travel from the Earth to the Moon and back again. The Orion spacecraft can transport up to six people at once, but the plan is to send four people at a time for a start. The first test flight for the SLS and Orion is scheduled for this month and it is to be an uncrewed flight that will carry out a practical test of the whole system and also deliver some research satellites into each orbit. A crewed flight test is to be done in 2022 to take Orion to a lunar orbit and back again. And if everything goes as planned in 2024, the official mission to the moon will be done. Before astronauts reach the moon's surface, they are to stop off at the Gateway, which is basically a space station that is similar to the International Space Station that will be in orbit around the moon. Gateway is an international project also, and it's being sponsored by and involves teams from NASA, Canada, Europe, and Japan. The models of the Gateway will be sent into space piece by piece over the next couple of years, and the station is designed to function autonomously and use the Canada Arm Version 3 to assemble itself while awaiting the crew. This means that by 2024, the crew will get to the moon to meet a ready space station, which will be a docking point for the Orion spacecraft and a staging ground for the astronauts. 
Only two out of the four astronauts will get to make the trip to the lunar surface, while the other two will stay put at the gateway. This is where SpaceX comes in, as the astronauts will need to be transported from the gateway to the lunar surface and back again, and this will be done by a SpaceX Starship vehicle, which is a modified version of the original design SpaceX has been developing with NASA to meet the needs of a human landing system for the moon. Try to think of it as more of a space Uber. The contract between NASA and SpaceX for its development is valued at $2.9 billion. The moon lander Starship is to take off from Earth on a super heavy booster, uncrewed, and fly into the lunar orbit to await the arrival of the astronauts. The two people who land on the moon will remain there for one week to carry out experiments and explore the surface while living in the Starship. And after the week is done, they will head back to the gateway in the Starship and everyone will return to Earth in the Orion spacecraft. The Orion will, however, not land on Earth, but release the capsule with the astronauts inside of it. Some people think that this plan is overly complicated and expensive, as unlike SpaceX craft, NASA SLS is not reusable, and after that, one journey becomes a waste. NASA, however, started this plan five years ago and could not reasonably base its plans on SpaceX's ability to deliver as SpaceX did not have the proven track record it has now at that time. They therefore went ahead to design the program according to how NASA does things. There are, however, possibilities of getting independent Starship journeys to the moon in the future. Imagine the process of going to the moon being as simplified as purchasing a plane ticket. These are indeed the early days of a long-term moon colonization program that is going to span decades. After a successful first trip to the moon, NASA wants to focus on achieving the Artemis base camp talked about earlier, so as to send teams of astronauts up once per year to develop and expand the project. They are, however, not the only ones with the idea, as China and Russia have announced a collaboration to establish their own moon base. Although they have not revealed much about this plan, China has been able to land a probe on the dark side of the moon a couple of years back, which means they are serious about the project and also able to pull it off. It looks like the world powers are really thinking of colonizing the moon by reaching it before others. But we have to wonder why the moon is suddenly important, as there are a lot of things we do not know about the moon, because NASA has been focused more on the process of reaching it, and upon doing so, conducting experiments to make new discoveries, and learning new things about what goes on in space, and not on the politics of reaching space first. There are some reasons that have been identified as to why people might want to colonize the moon, and the most important part of them is resources. In the past, it was assumed that the moon was a big dead chunk of rock, but more studies have shown that there is more to it and that there is a lot of very useful stuff on the moon which opens up the possibility of mining on the moon and a whole new industry for the future. One of these resources is water, which is frozen solid in the bottom craters that are in permanent shade from the sun. The presence of water shows the presence of oxygen and hydrogen, which are very much needed if a moon-based settlement is to be established. Other resources that have been discovered on the moon are helium-3, which is very rare on Earth, but useful in the energy sector for things like nuclear fusion and and can become the power source on the moon. Also found on the moon are silicon, iron, magnesium, aluminum, manganese, and titanium. All of these are very important for developing our modern electronic devices on Earth, particularly batteries that are essential to our daily lives. So while the focus presently is about science and exploration, in the long-term arrangement, it will move to resource extraction, which is amazing but concerning due to possible abuse of the this opportunity based on our history with Earth. The possibility of having access to the resources on the moon and the ensuing opportunities are perhaps why people have been thinking of colonizing the moon. That's it for the video, guys. We would like to know your thoughts on the colonization of the moon in the comment section. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to TechBang. Stay safe, and we will see you in the next video.